Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, live from Harlem in New York City, it's the Ramble, and I'm Alex, I'm in the red letters there, and it's a red letter day for us, I guess. Ladies and gentlemen, from his car, are you in Fallon, Nevada right now? I am about one mile from the Top Gun Naval Station. At my uh, late parents' house. And that's Chuck Farnham, as I said. Uh, he used to be our stunt guy on the morning show, and now he's just a regular guy. But, boy, you're having now I make now, Alex, Alex, now I make $500 an hour. You make $500 an hour? Yep. I have a freaking ridiculous place here that I need to sell all the crap at. And people show up, and they're giving me 500 bucks an hour for crap. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's amazing. How much of your crap is going? This is your mother's crap, right? Uh, it's for my great-grandfather and my stepdad's crap. Oh, okay. All right. We're talking, we're talking hundreds of, of uh, hammers. Uh, <laughs> maybe fifty or sixty thousand wrenches and screwdrivers. Um, no, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What need did he have for that many hammers and that many uh, screwdrivers? Unfortunately, the individuals that I need to discuss that with are no longer alive. Right. So I'm screwed. Yeah, but you knew him pretty well. Did you know him? I didn't for... go running around out in the barn. No, but did you know about the about the hammers and the uh, the, the screwdrivers? Oh no, 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 dude! Right in front of me, less than thirty feet away. Here, let me uh, here, let me uh, give you this little view. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. You see that? Oh man, that looks like Nevada. Oh Jesus! It's uh, a, uh, there's a freaking jaguar. That's a jaguar in the, in the yard. Is it is it a working jaguar? Now he froze up on me. Hmm. We lost him. Hello, Chuck. Uh -oh. oh. Okay. I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, t turn your camera you on. Me? There you go. There we go. Okay. I don't know what happened. Just don't move your All camera. Right, so Obviously, the there's. A, huh. There's a Jaguar and six tractors here. Uh, is that a working Jaguar? I do not know. Well, why don't you go over and turn it on? Oh, you don't have the key. Right. Yeah, well, how do you get a key? I don't know. That's the big problem. You know, it's you don't when, know. When, there's, so, it, there's, so, yeah, Marjor there's so much crap here. Yeah. You don't know where to start. Marjorie is trying to get me to give her every piece of information I possibly can about my stuff yes. and everything she can possibly tell me about her stuff because God forbid yes, one of us drops dead and the other suddenly doesn't know where the key to the Jaguar is. Dude, you'll, you'll end up where I am, which is I got a motorhome, uh, a motorcycle, a boat, a camp trailer, uh, two sedans, and six tractors. And they're all yours. And all the all the implements that go with them. And then six large buildings filled with every freaking tool you could imagine. Now these are buildings. Or are they sheds? Yeah. They're no, they're buildings. They're buildings, not sheds. Wow. Right. So here let me get this straight now. You have six buildings. You see, I don't understand this. I'm not um I'm not a redneck, okay? All right. right. So I don't understand this, but why do you have six structures that are buildings and then you live in a trailer? Right. 
because the, the view is that that the stuff in the sheds is more valuable than the stuff in the trailers or in the trailer <laughs> yeah but why don't you live in the shed in one of these sheds or one of these it, it, it's got to be larger than the than the the, the um, um, trailer right oh dude the, the barn is huge yeah it's huge yeah there were people coming over here the other day mm -hmm. that wanted to buy the barn take it down and bring it to their house is it a cool barn yeah it's really nice it's, it's got stalls for like about eight animals maybe ten a real barn barn yeah so this has been pretty much your life since i've talked to you last right yeah because i got to get rid of all this crap yeah i got there's nothing i mean there is so much stuff if, I, if you were here alex mm -hmm. it would be overwhelming and you need to sit down in about two seconds it's there, there's nowhere to start i found this morning i found 150 heads to hammers not i have another 100 hammers but these are just the heads to hammers wow it's it, this is this has been uh, not this hasn't been any fun for you has it no no and i have no emotional attachment to this place yeah. So it's it's painful. It's not like the home you grew up in or anything like no, no, that. No, 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 not at all. As a matter of fact, the guy wanted, there's a photo in the house of where I grew up, and the guy wanted to buy that. Really? So how did you get people said, to know no. that all this stuff was for sale? I, I put a little note on Facebook. Okay. And that was enough? Crap, here comes, the, here, here comes a guy who might want to be buying stuff right now. What the fuck? No. Looks like he's delivering a water truck. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. I put a little sign out and the shit hit the fan. So Wait. now I'm, I'm changing my, my mode. I'm now going to do this. For a hundred bucks, you can come out here for an hour and take whatever you want. For a hundred bucks, hundred bucks. All you can load into your car and a and hundred dollars. What is the most popular thing people are buying? It can't be hammers. Oh, mm, um, there are some hammer people, <laughs> but um, uh, there's a lot of socket people. A lot of socket people. A lot of socket people. Won't. There was an air compressor out here earlier, and the guy goes, I'll give you 10 bucks for it. And it, it looks kind of brand new, this big air compressor. And I said, I tell you what, it's uh, $25 if it doesn't work, and $15 if it does work. The guy looks at me, and he looks at the other guy, who I, I know the other guy, and, and the guy looks at him and looks at me, and I go, I told you I was crazy, right? And he goes, it's 25 if it doesn't work, but it's 15 if it does work. I go, yeah. You know why? And he goes, no, oh, why? And I go, because I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. See why I love this guy? See? See? Uh -huh. You get you get the idea, folks? Man, dude, I got, oh, I got pencils. I got about 100 pencils with my hometown engraved on them. What was your hometown? Powell, Wyoming. Where? Powell, Northern Wyoming. Oh, Northern right Wyoming. Park. Powell is that? I grew up next to Yellowstone Park. Oh, okay, all right. Because I went to Lake Powell once, but that's in. That's a little different. Yeah, no, no. This is all hill hillbillies in Powell. Oh, really? A lot of hillbillies. Oh yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, the guy, one of the guys, was here. He, he goes. I go, where are you from? And he goes, oh, Lander, Wyoming. You probably never heard of it. And I go, yeah, we used to play in basketball every year. So, so all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we bonded. This would be a, a weird question to ask. So, how come you turned out so normal? Many people <laughs> ask the same question. 
Not that this is normal, folks, but... No, 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 but, you know, you know me, and you know the people around me, and then you go, what the... F you know, even the wife does the same thing. She goes, you're not like them. Are you sure you're not from there? By the way, is that a new beard? No, there's no beard, dude. A shame. No, you had all this stuff here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I have no hair. I got hair gone. You got hair. Yeah, like like before it was in a ponytail. Now it's. I asked the woman at the hair salon. She was Korean, and I asked her to make it just like uh, that that fine guy from North Korea, and she did. Oh, okay. So now I look like Kim Jong Un. <laughs> you just broke up again. I got nothing to do. What am I? You know. Yeah. What am I have to do? Sit down here. Your picture we'll is frozen and, and your sound is breaking you know, up a bit on us. Here, here we go. Yeah, huh? yeah. Uh, we're, we're, you know, it, it might be interesting because um, you might get actually better signal outside. Why don't you just get outside with the phone? All right. And let's see if that. it doesn't break up. Keep an eye on it. Make sure it doesn't break up. There we go. Now. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be able to see you, but oh, there, there we go. Uh, the screen goes all black. But, but now it's starting to freeze up. See, mm, there you go. Show us. Uh, uh, so can we see the trailer from here? Sure. Hold on. Uh, uh, oh wow! Oh, jeez, Almighty! Oh God! Oh. Need a pickup truck? Yeah. That's a. Uh, 1968 Dodge 200. Really? And is it... Need uh, a lawnmower? Is, does it work? That actually runs. It runs. Now, what, what's that car there that you're pointing at? Uh, looks like an old... Yeah. You don't know. And now we're frozen. Boy, you get great, great... Uh, <laughs> You get great phone service out there, don't you? Not at all. Yeah. Wait oh. a minute. Now, all of this was your, what, your mother's home or your stepfather's home or what? My mom and my step, my mom and my stepdad. I see. And they and lived, the they lived in, in that mess, huh? Apparently so. Welcome to another episode of Hoarders, I, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Wow. Hillbilly Living, one of one. Yeah. There's the guys across the street. Yeah. It's the guy down the way. See, we got more stuff. I don't know if you can see in the distance. Yeah. He's got 25 acres worth of crap. <laughs> this, there's there's the least. Is? You know what it is, Chuck? Nevada is a state with nothing in it. Except for two, yeah. ma two major cities, Reno and Las Vegas. Okay? And everything mm -hmm. in between is pretty much empty. I mean, I remember when I had my friend uh, Dennis Hoff who had, you know, the Moonlight Bunny Ranch. Uh, right. I remember where it was. It was out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's about, um, about 20 minutes from here. Where, the Moonlight Bunny Ranch? Yeah. So you're near Carson City? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because that's where the Moonlight Bunny Ranch was. Right, well, the Moonlight Bunny Ranch is between Carson and where I'm at right now. You know, also, you're talking about a state where some of the major edifices, some of the major structures that people remember are whorehouses. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's Nevada for you. We're a fine bunch here, let me tell you. Yeah, and I used to go to the Black Rock Desert, you know, because we used to go to the uh, Burning, Burning Man. Burning Man, which is, which is about an hour north of me. Yeah, we, we used to go to Burning Man uh, before it became as big as it is today. Burning exactly. Man, when it cost $25 to get in. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good time. So, anyway, so... So how you hold and all the all the tumbleweeds you saw, by the way, yeah, are really great on your asthma. Re the tumbleweed has pollen. 
Yeah, everywhere, dude. Everywhere. See, this is the most educational yeah, portion. Here, like, you wouldn't believe it. This is the most educational call we have made on our show. Yeah, you know what I can do next time? Well, I can drive down the road a ways, and maybe the plane the planes were flying earlier, but you know they're not at the moment because I can't hear them. Um, maybe there was. One. Well, you say the, the Top Gun. Uh, you say the, the top, top Gun based. What do you say? Why do you call it the you can Top see Gun? Them do, it's the Top Gun Naval Station. It's where the Tom Cruise movie was made. It's all right. where all the jets and the drones uh, practice all day. Wow. But you see, it's funny. I told you to take your phone and take a little walk with it so we could see stuff. And really, there was nothing to see. Well, there's, you know, if you're looking for some wrenches, I know where you can get them. Now, how many acres, on how many acres of land did your mother and your stepfather live? Um, there it looks like about, there's 10 here at least, maybe 15. Really? So they own 15 yeah. acres of land. Here, now, here's the thing. Why don't you take that 15 acres of land? Is it near a major road? Uh, the, the road that is right next to this isn't even a county road. Oh. Because I was yeah. saying if it was a major road, you could maybe put up a Froster's Freeze or something like that, you know. Uh, there's one of those in town. <laughs> Sadly, true. There's, I'm going to drive by one on the way into town. Or you got 15 acres, you could turn it into, oh, hey, you could turn it into a drive-in movie theater. Yeah, the drive-in movie theater near town blew down. <laughs> and the movie theater in town chose free movies. Oh, really? Here's the thing, by the way, folks, and yeah. I mentioned this, I think this is very important. This is how the other half lives, okay? Oh, yeah. 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 Very much so. So once you take I, care I, of all, are you going to sell off the land? As quick as I freaking can. Yeah, okay. I don't want to keep coming out here. It gets really, well, you've been on the phone with me. It gets really depressing. I get really, really depressing. Look, and, you, you, and showed, you showed what it was like outside the window, outside the car, and basically it's how I remember Nevada. There's nothing. Yeah, but I'm like, you know, there's still an indentation on the bed in the house where my mom died. Wow. I just, you know, it just feels creepy. The whole thing feels creepy. I want it to go away so I don't have to deal with it anymore. And I can move on. Yeah. Did it, you ever find uh, out what your mother died from? What? what no, mother? no, they never said. What do you mean they never said? That, don't they have to say? No. Not if nobody questions anything. Now, did you bury her or did you have her? She's in the living room at uh, the house. Oh, okay. All right. And your stepfather? He's in the living room with some um, corn nuts next to her. <laughs> oh, why? why corn nuts? Is that just where you kept them? But when he was in the hospital, all he kept doing was asking me to get him corn nuts. And they were like, no, he's going to choke on them. You can't bring him corn nuts, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this guy is really, I mean, he's very, very, very ill. And so I said, I sat down, had a little family meeting, and, and everybody decided Gino wants corn nuts. Gino gets corn nuts. And we got him corn nuts, and he was so he was happy as a clam. And then when he died and the mortician, I asked the mortician, I said, could you, if I give you a big bag of corn nuts, can you cremate him with, the, with Gino? And he looked at me like I was crazy. What a shock. And he goes, no problem. So they're corn nuts so, in with the ashes. Yeah. Well, that was, there was something nice about that, you know? I think so. Well, here, here, you want the other side of that coin. They give me my mother, and I take her out, you know, she's in an urn, in a bag, in a box. So I take the box, uh, you know, the bag out of the box, 
and I take the bag off of the urn. And my hands are covered in dust, okay? Now, is it really dust as I'm looking at it? I'm like, no, it's cremation remains. My mom is all over my hand. And I'm like, what the hell am I gonna do? I mean, do you go into the sink and wash your hands? And then you drop her down the sink? Well, wait that a minute. How did the like ashes, doesn't... the ashes were in the urn, right? Right, but they were all over the outside of the urn, too. Was the urn open or was it closed? I, I, I think when they dumped the ashes in, a bunch of them ended up covering the urn. I see. Okay. So now, now, now you know that my that hands came, are covered that, in this. That came from a place where they did a cremation. How do you know that was your mother's ashes? Right. Well, you know, small town. <laughs> exactly. So I got the ashes all over my hands, and I'm like, well, do I wipe them on a towel? Do I wash my hands? What do I do? And I'm sitting there, and it came to me. I came out of this woman at some point. Why don't I just lick it off my hands and she could go back into me? No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. You licked the ashes? Yeah. What am I going to do? Would you wash your mom off your hands into the sewer system? Huh, that's that a good, sounds horrible. That's a good question. My mother is buried. I've yet to get her a tombstone. But she's right next to my father who has one. So I was just thinking, like, you know, the tombstones are expensive. But just getting, like, pointing an arrow. Yeah, we we can do I got some tools that'll do that. What? what? I have tools that we can do that. Oh, okay, good, good. We we can just go out there with the chisel and a couple of tools and... You remember my my mother. I love your mother. My mother lived to be over 100. I know. She was wonderful, that lady. You, well, you know, you say that, but you that was, it wasn't your mother. I have a different perspective. I, yeah. I have a totally different perspective. Everybody loved my mother. Oh, she's so sweet, you know. My mother was the biggest con artist in the world, you know. But she wanted people to love her because they might do something for her. I took her grocery shopping. Yeah, see, see, see. What am I going to do? She's a little old lady, and it was, you know, you needed to go to the store. Well, was I a good son, did you did you figure? I think so, probably. Because I thought I was always kind of a shitty son, you know. Huh? I mean, You're... when she wanted to go to the grocery store and get groceries, I didn't go over and pick her up and take her to get groceries. She walked down a block and got the groceries and brought them back, right. and I think that's why she lived to be 100. Probably. I think it's when... When kids suddenly dote on their parents and go, oh, no, I'll pick you up and we'll go get the groceries, you're not doing them any favors. Does that make sense? <laughs> Good point. Or, or you just die and give them all the crap I've got now, and now I'm you know, getting so much exercise, it's not funny. Yeah, yeah. Hey, there. speaking of which, yeah. your mom, and I don't know if you remember this, your mom had this big um, framed chunk of your hair in the living room over the TV. Whatever happened to that? I have no idea. That's a shame. It was my baby hair. Yeah, a lot of it. Yeah. When I got my first haircut, she she kept the hair and then she yeah. had it framed. And now you wonder right why not, now you wonder why I feel so smothered and and have uh, uh, I, I I get uh, a great fear of claustrophobia. You can't put me in an MRI right. machine. I'd be kicking and screaming. You know, uh, because my mother was so doting on yeah, me, and, and I forgot about that hair in the in the frame. I always thought that was really. Spooky. Uh, yeah, it was right next to a picture of, right next to a picture of her and Greg Kinn. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh boy. Well, I remember too much. I yeah. Well, we got a, about a half about a half a minute left here. Anything? Any right. anything you want to plug? Yeah. Anybody needs um, hammers, 
Yeah. Now, uh, and, and where can they find you? Sitting where? Where Where um, is that exactly? Fallon, Nevada. And all you have to do is type my name into the internet, and I'm real easy to spot. Yeah, but but the place where you are right now. Oh, oh yeah. I'm no, no. You call my house when I drive my fat butt out here, because. And you wouldn't be able to, the, the neighbors around here are a little protective. Mm -hmm. And if they see something that's not my car out here, they start shooting from their house. Okay, well, that's a wonderful thing to know. Anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time here. And um, uh, I, I was talking to Lori yesterday about you. And sometime you'll have to call us when Lori and I are talking. The three of us will get together. Uh, but uh, let well, me talk. great. Why don't you stay where you are, and we'll talk right after we're finished with this recording. Ladies and gentlemen, Chuck Farnham, he's in Fallon, Nevada, out in a lot with a lot of cars and junk. Yep. That's me, junk guy. Thanks, Chuck. I'm, uh, no, you know who I am? I feel like I'm Mr. Uh, Haney. <laughs> we'll see you later, Chuck. Ciao, pal. Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, there he is, uh, Chuck Barnum, ladies and gentlemen, from, the, <laughs> from the, the, the middle of the desert somewhere. I don't know. You know, it's one of those, those trailers you see, those, those, you know, and then all the cars junk, that are junked around. It's just, um, uh, that's life in Nevada. It's, you know, uh, I'll, I'll leave it as it is. Anyway, uh, we've got a bunch of people here who want to come on and uh, talk to us, I guess. It looks like, you know. So if I go over uh, to, uh, let me see, admit all, and then uh, I, uh, I, I got people coming in here. Let me see here. Kevin Stopper. Boy, where are you, Kevin? I'm in my car driving home. Oh, you're in your car driving home. How far are you from home? Uh, about 10 minutes or so. Oh, okay. So in about 10 minutes, we'll get a normal picture of you, right? Yeah. 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 Hurry. Yeah. Hurry up, Bert. Yeah, hurry up. Speed. Speed. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sitting in traffic for some damn reason. It's backed up. It's I, usually I, not backed up here, and I want to get home. Yeah, I, don't, I gotta pee. I, 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 <laughs> <sighs> Anybody else have to pee here? I'll I'll wait. I could just pull over right here too. Well, that's the advantage of being a guy. You know, you can actually pee from the uh, from a moving car. Actually. Yeah, as a truck driver, we used to call it draining our mud flaps. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> hello to uh, hello to uh, our old friend uh, Josh Wheeler. Um, hello, Josh. Hello. Reason we're getting you on a different night this week is uh, you might be able to spend two nights with us because you you took the week off or something. I did. We just got home today. Yeah, and you're you're between jobs. You're going back to your old job, right? I am. Yes. Yeah. So I'm currently, technically, I'm unemployed. Really? I'm jobless. Well, I got, look, uh, that's what we have in common. I am unemployed. Well. Yeah. Unless you consider this. Part of a little support group or something like that. Should I consider this employment? Mm, sure. Oh, yeah, okay. file taxes and everything. Uh, well, uh, no, I don't pay taxes on this. You should, yeah, just, just, you should. Income, zero. Well, no, I do. I mean, I, I declare a couple of hundred bucks a year that I get from uh youtube yeah that's about it you know if you people would start getting other people to watch me in great numbers i could make some money out of this but you don't care about old alex he's just a has been i used to be a big shot you know <laughs> remember remember we me when i was a big shot uh uh, uh yes i do Brian? yeah yes back in the day back in the day back in the day yeah, yeah. Uh, extra, yeah. extra thing. So you might uh, should be able to do some more shows as the weeks go. Yeah, 
yeah. But you know, I, I we see. I I'm always tired doing this show lately, and one of the reasons is is that if I actually felt it was making me money, I might put more energy into it. Well, you know. Uh, I mean, I still try to do the best show possible, but, you know, I'm 84 years old. By the way, the promo says I'm 82, I just noticed. Um, but uh, just adapt, adapt it when you hear the, that spot. I should never put in things that are dated. Of course, then again, I would have I, I, I put in 82 because I figured I'd never make it to 84 and look at me. Here I am. So, you know. What the hell? Well, anyway, uh, what's new? What's new? Oh, yeah, uh, uh, Trump uh, uh, isn't getting his, uh, his wishes in the Mar-a-Lago case. Um, That's too bad. Huh? That's too bad. Too bad for him? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the judge, who he appointed, by the way, mm. who I figured was going to go in his favor on everything, said, no, no. There's no reason to cancel this uh, this charge against you. So he's on his way, you know. Yeah, it's it's you know certain things are difficult for even a sympathetic judge to to do because you know there still has to be some legal basis. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, and they're really in his particular case. There, this one is there's not. I mean, he's got to have a uh, trial and and whatnot, but look, let's just use plain English here. I mean, guilty, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's you know you're not really supposed to say that, and I'm not a big believer in, you know, uh, declaring things before they go through the legal system and all that. But there's no basis to dismiss it because. You know, I mean, if this were a drug case, for example, it's akin to you got pulled over and in the passenger seat, there was your big block of drugs. It's your car and you're the only one in it. <laughs> you know, there's the stuff. I mean, what judge can dismiss that, right? I mean, it's difficult to have that kind of stuff dismissed. So, Well, is I'm running for president a good excuse? Uh, no. How about the dog ate my homework? No, that no can't work. use That's that one probably either. better than I'm running for president, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's not, you know. So they don't they don't really have they didn't have any legal argument really. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure they wrote something on paper. I mean, anybody can do that, but they weren't gonna have any kind of su success with that because they just don't have. A basis for having charges on something like that dismissed. Well, you know, there's one case we keep forgetting about, and that's the other case here in New York City, the Stormy Daniels case. Uh, and um, yeah. that has been put on hold for mm. a couple of months because the uh, attorney general or whoever is charging him with that wants to make sure the defense has access to all the materials. So I guess they're doing that because if uh, if they win, they don't want it to get thrown out of court on some technicality. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a bit of a headline of delay about that because of the number of documents that were just turned over in discovery or something to give all the parties more time to come through them. So... Well, I think America would like to see one of these cases go to the go to court before uh, you know before the election, but well, it should, yeah. But it probably won't. They'll probably stall it out. I don't know if he can if he can all of them that long. Uh, yeah. It, you know, it will be impossible to have all of them before that. I think because of the timeline, but I don't think that. He has a way to push all of them past the election uh, because on a few of these here, I mean, he's nearly out of appeals and, you know, uh, things to ask for stays and all that kind of stuff. And the Supreme Court will settle the, the latest one once and for all by the end of June when their term ends. I mean, it could come before that. 
-hmm. but their term ends end of June and they, they usually put all their decisions out. Well, not usually they, they put all their decisions out right there at the end of June before July 1st, you know, like the 29th, 30th, something like that. So that'll get resolved. And, you know, once, once they do their thing, what do you think is going to happen there? Do you think they're going to, I mean, it's really, I don't know how they can stand up for the idea that a president has immunity from anything. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I certainly would hope that they would have, you know, a unanimous thinking there similar to the last case with the election removal, you know, the ballot removal. Well, I mean, but, but how much, how much does a president, how much immunity does a president have? I mean, really uh, uh, what I'm thinking about is the only immunity he really has is that I can't sue him mm-hmm. while, right. while he's president. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, On the other hand, he thing. can't sue me either. Yeah. You know, but presidents are not going to have immunity for the things, certainly for the things that he argued, because what he and his legal team argued is, is so broad that they literally could do, you know, anything they wanted. But even if it were to be more narrowly defined, it, it's still not really going to fly because if, you know, one of the arguments that I'm sure will be made is, and this is a legitimate one, is that, listen, the framers did discuss what the president should have immunity from. We can go back into the notes of their debates and we can go over what they said. They settled on a very, very limited or, you know, as they'll say, an enumerated set of things to be immune from. And that's what they put in the document. And that's what got ratified. That was their intention. It was not their intention for it to be larger than that. If it were larger than that, they would have listed more things. You know, that'll be. So what did they list? What's, you know, I can't, you know, we'd have to go back and really read it and take a look at it. But it's so, I mean, it's literally about the only things, you know, that apply are, like you mentioned, you know, from, you know, uh, lawsuits and things like that and their official capacity and not much else. I mean, maybe some stuff relating from like their work product and stuff, but, you know, there's not much there. I mean, I mean, and does he have immunity, even though something happened while he was president that was mm-hmm. illegal? Okay, right. does he have immunity when he's no longer president, or he can he then get charged with that? I mean, if you're saying if he breaks the law, let's say he does something while he's in office, mm-hmm. he's president. Let's say he has some immunity at the time. Yeah. All right. Now he's no longer president. Can they then go ahead and charge him with that crime and the immunity doesn't hold? Well, I say yes, because I don't really think the president has immunity from anything other than if there were something specifically enumerated in the Constitution for them to have it. And if and there's really not. I mean, the one thing that there is, we, we discussed, you know, and I can go back and try to get the exact wording and everything here. No. That's fine. But other than that, I don't think they have immunity. And like I've said before, I've never bought into this <laughs> argument that if they break the law six months in and we know they did, everyone sits around and says, well, we don't, you know, we don't, we don't prosecute till they're done. We'll wait three and a half years. I mean, I think that's a load of crap too. You know, I've never yeah. bought that argument. Well, we, well, it, he, it, if, if he, do, but it, I never did. Well, if he does commit a crime while he's in office, he can be impeached. Can be. And, and then yeah. could be found guilty in the Senate. Could be, right. And then, but the punishment there is just removal from office. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've, I've just, I've never believed that, you know, it, it, that the Justice Department knows that the president committed a crime and can't prosecute him until he's out of he or she well, is I out mean, of office. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, do do we why? have to believe that the reason that Trump wanted to be president of the United States is so he could get away with murder, basically? And well, he thinks I that mean, as president, he has the this uh, this absolute immunity from everything. 
Yeah, like I said, though, I've never believed that stuff. I mean, I, 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 and I don't think, I'm, and the reason that I never believed it isn't because of some personal. Well, why do you think the Supreme Court is thing. even listening to the arguments on that? Well, I mean, are they trying to stall that case in Washington D.C. so that well, it doesn't happen before the election? I mean, I think that. The reason that they are, are listening to it is probably because this is the chance to settle it once and for all. I mean, I think they see the issue is out there, and it's causing disagreement, okay, throughout the country. And I think they see that if it's not clearly defined, we could be in dangerous territory because... Presidents could continue to claim this. Like, basically, if they don't say anything at all, they're sort of, you know, complicit in anything that might happen because their silence was, could almost be perceived as approval. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it is. I'm saying some people could say that, you know. Yeah. I think that they know that the only way to really shut all this down, fix this issue once and for all, is to take this case. They haven't said anything prior to this because there's never been a case, right? I mean, they can't just say it by decree. they got to have something in front of them. Right. And when this came up, you know, I think this is how Justice Roberts or somebody would look at it for sure, is saying, okay, this is our chance to, to squash this nonsense. Mm -hmm. If we take this case, especially if we come out here with an 8-1 to one or a 9-0 ruling, we say the president's not immune, blah, 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 blah. That's it. It's done. With this issue is settled basically once and for all or until Congress and the people pass a constitutional amendment that says the president's immune from everything because he's our king now and we're <laughs> going to change our constitution, right? Not going to happen. So that's what I'm saying is that I think they view it as the chance to set this issue straight. Yeah, you well, uh, it's, it's and, some, uh, John Redshaw, who's on, in the chat room, says, that basically um, uh, the uh, the Supreme Court is just trying to delay. That's the, 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 what they're doing okay. is a favor to Trump. Hmm. I mean, uh, okay, so if I mean we have a pretty corrupt we have a pretty corrupt Supreme Court right now. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I don't know if I would use I don't know that I would think. I say that rock. if you if you give deference to a man who got you your job, you're being corrupt. But I don't really know. I don't I don't know where they have done that, you know. Yeah. I mean, they haven't done anything to help or assist him in my opinion. I mean, you know, I mean, he's facing legal troubles that they can't stop and haven't stopped you know mm -hmm. they haven't really done anything to assist them i mean the ballot case was decided it was in front of them i don't really disagree with much of that i mean that was a nine nothing case i mean if you're going to say that they helped him out there i mean what, elena kagan helped him out you know i mean or you know it, i mean it's all nine justices so I mean, I I don't know. I don't view it as corrupt. I mean, corrupt to me is you know they're they're on the take, you know. So I mean, I you know I don't know that that's how I view it. Well, okay, Clarence Thomas, <laughs> corrupt. I don't know. Again, I don't know that I'd say corrupt. I would say, you know, uh, suspect. Yeah, I mean, it morally or, you know, I guess the word I'm looking for is ethically maybe corrupt. I don't know, again, that he's on the take because, again, I don't but see I mean, anything that has happened where he was the swinging factor. I mean, <clears throat> some people can go and say, oh, yeah, but in this case he agreed. Yeah, well, he, yeah but he agreed with six other people. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, so, I mean, you know, he's one vote out of nine. It's, it's not as if his, you know, one vote was able to 
swing anything and change the course that I am aware of, you know, but I mean, not a fan. Okay. And ethically, I think is off the rails, you mm -hmm. know, for sure. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, I guess when I think corrupt in my mind, you know, I, I mean, I see corrupt as, you know, ex in exchange for whatever, I'll do this or that for you. You know, I mean, I just I don't see what the court really has done for Trump, you know, mm -hmm. other than agree to hear some of his cases. But that's not really. I, I mean, outside. I mean, that's that's their job in a way. I mean, these are big cases. I mean, court's going to take them. But you know what? You and uh, you know, we were talking about immunity. I mean, the Supreme Court justices have a certain measure of immunity, even though it's not stated that way, because who's going to go after them? You know, nobody seems to go unless after they, them ever. I mean, if, unless they break, you know, if they break laws, and, you know, they can be prosecuted like anybody well, the else. Whole, the whole story with, uh, with, uh, with Clarence Thomas, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, he's been getting away with a lot of stuff over the years, and it's pretty well been documented. Yeah, but and I think, but a lot of people, even the people that don't like him, have agreed these. But these things are not illegal. Yeah, I mean, they don't have any evidence of, you know, a case that says, you know, your yes vote to affirm this yeah. thing here is worth. Here's your money. You know, I mean, uh, again, ethically, not not in bounds, right. you know, on several of the things that he did. But, I mean, I, even people that hate him haven't come out and said this is illegal. I've seen people come out and say it should be illegal. Mm -hmm. Don't disagree. Congress can legislate that. You know, they can set uh, some of those, but they haven't done it, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, because it's going to be hard yeah. to do. Yeah. Um, which doesn't mean they shouldn't, but I, you know, I'm just saying. But by the way, and I, I don't yeah. know how the you know the comment about you know the court. So I don't know. I mean, in in three months from now, if the court comes out in a nine nothing decision or an eight one decision that says the president is not immune from anything, I mean, is the same person going to write back and say they were wrong? You know, I don't know. Yeah. By the way, um, uh, I love I love Drudge on certain levels because he always has great headlines. And his headline tonight is MAGA King Rejected by MAGA Judge. Uh, and it says that online betting, I guess in the uh, Biden-Trump matchup, is back to a dead heat. Mm. So, uh, you know, I think Biden could win this one without much trouble. Trump has a lot of. Well, I think well, I think Trump is losing a lot of Republicans, and where are they going to go? They're not going to go to Biden, so they're just not going to vote for Trump. Likely, yeah. yeah, or vote, you know, for some sort of third party. Oh God, that please, please, look, please, please, yeah. Biden, you know. Well, yeah, wait, 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 but where are they going to go? Are they, you think they're going to go to RFK Jr.? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I said some sort of third party. I mean, they may go and, and, you know, a lot of people might do something like what Patrick will probably do, which is not vote for that part of the ticket and vote for everything else or write someone in or, you know, but, you know, I mean. Hey, everybody, if you don't want to go for Trump, write me in, okay? Sure. Yeah. It'd be a lot of fun if all of a sudden I was very popular among but, Crazy but because Trump is the one mainly that has this issue and not really Biden, certainly, you know, like within the party, a non-vote for Trump and somewhere else is perhaps just as good as a vote for Biden in a way by yeah, proxy. Yeah, yeah. Possibly, you know, is kind of how I would see it because I don't see Biden having... Because you know you got to remember when you issue. when you look at Nikki Haley as an example, she got about somewhere between thirty five and forty percent of the vote of the Republican vote. Well, that's right. thirty five to forty percent of the people who would have voted for Trump who just don't want to. Yeah. So you know, uh, wait a minute. It says it's what is this? All of a sudden, this is 
all of a sudden something came up and said that we were having trouble with our our CPU here, but we weren't. So. I didn't see any trouble. No, I don't see any trouble either. But uh, they no drop frames or anything like that, so I don't know what that whole message was that I got. Uh, here comes uh, here comes Bree out there in uh, in um, um, what part of the world is it again, Bree? It's uh, Malaysia. And he's going to lunch again. Yes. Yeah. I can you hear me, Alex? Yeah, I can I can hear you. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm just heading heading to lunch now. Mm -hmm. And the timing is different now that you've sprung forward, I guess. So it's eleven twenty five here. Oh, so it's the same, it's it's twenty four hours later. Yes. So you're living in the future, is that what you're That's saying? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sure. I'll tell you the lottery numbers later. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Good idea. Anyway, um, uh, uh, so anyway, uh, Brian, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a. There's. A, I mentioned it before, but there's a car. A car guy who uh, is running for president on the the Libertarian, I guess, party. And uh, yeah, he's been winning. They have like straw polls and all this other weird stuff. And yeah, he's he's been doing good against uh, Junior Kennedy Junior. Oh look, he's, there there's some cars in. Uh, where was that? Was that a car dealership there? Uh, wait a minute, hold on a second. Oh, oh, those are just some cars. No, just cars. Oh, it looked like it was a it looked hey, like. Hey, hey, uh, Bree, translate how much money that is for the food. Okay. Yeah, there's different prices here. Um, you can see the English and the Chinese there. Yeah, well, you see the prices and are twelve. Uh, five well, ringgit is a dollar. Yeah, but but the prices are twelve hours off. Yes, that's right. <laughs> um, there are car places here. Mm -hmm. There, there's some. Uh, they have one called Big Boy Toys. You can buy a car there if you want. You can buy a car, or can you buy several cars if you so desire? You could buy several cars if you wanted to. You could buy whatever you wanted to. Oh, okay. Okay. So, anyway. Um, I think a lot, a lot of those countries, right, Bree, you, you have to pay, like, huge taxes for a license, right? Like Singapore? No, that's, you think, yeah, you're thinking of Singapore. Okay. I think what's bothering me today Not is Singapore. still, and it was bothering me yesterday, is the whole TikTok thing. Mm. You know, to begin with, correct me if I'm wrong on this, everybody, but TikTok, if they, there's no reason for them to sell uh, their company. They could just close it down in the United States. They're all over the world. You know, they could just say, we don't need the United States. Screw it. You know, Um but I, I just I'm I'm bothered by that whole thing. I, I just don't think they should be, uh, you know, to begin with saying that, oh, it's a data breach and it's going to screw up everything because the China's going to have all our information. What they're going to have information from a 13 year old kid who wants to key, see cute kitties? I mean, I don't I don't understand where the real threat to our democracy is if TikTok continues. But what you've got are a bunch of old farts in the Congress who know nothing about technology, know nothing about data breaches. They talk about them all the time, but they don't know what they are, you know? And I'm sure, how many of them have, even know how to use TikTok? You know, how do you feel about that, Charlie? You're our technical guy. Oh, I don't use TikTok. <laughs> what? I don't use TikTok. I don't, I, I don't, I don't use it, I don't use it either. But nevertheless, people want to watch right. it big deal yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you that it's ridiculous to try and ban it i mean that's just this is gonna piss off a whole bunch of young people and they're not gonna vote for democrats well what, what it's gonna what it's gonna do also is it's gonna deprive people who make money off of tiktok and there are people who make a lot of money off of tiktok who are not going to be contributing that money to our the income of the united states of america and if yeah. they just to say you know they've already said we're not going to sell Okay, 
So if they decide to pull out of the United States, they're everywhere else in the world. The Bree's, Bree will continue to be able to get TikTok, you know? So. You can get TikTok, get a VPN. Huh? Yeah, with a VPN, you can get yeah, with a, TikTok even yeah. here. With a VPN, you can get TikTok. Yeah. So, like oh, but, 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 but those guys in Congress who voted against it, you say that what you just said to me, to, to them, they don't know what the hell you're talking about. And that's a good thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, of course. A VPN, by the way, are VPN virtual private... Canada and get a lot of things. Virtual private networks, and what you do is you pay a little bit of money every year, and you can go online... And you can then sign on in another country. Yes. Yeah. It's good for traveling. But it's used for security purposes, right? VPN, yeah. that too, yeah. yeah. That's the original, right? Because yeah. we have yeah. VPN yeah. in my the only, I don't use my VPN, even though I pay for it, but I don't use my VPN because it's too, I think it slows it down the internet. That's what I've heard people say, yeah. yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Depends on the VPN servers you have. I have Nord. I have Nord Party. too. I have Nord. It slows. And, it. and I, you know, I I have a one uh, gigabyte or terabyte. I have one gigabyte speed, and it slows it from one gigabyte to eight hundred megabytes. Well, and, I found uh, it. I I have I have the gig too, and I have Nord, and I find it slows down. It's just slower, you know. I don't know. You know, I when I when I have bought. Uh, tickets to fly. If I put that I'm in the Bay Area here, then the tickets like round trip. I went to Chicago five years ago, and the when I bought the ticket, when I or, got the tickets to fly from the Bay Area, it was six hundred and fifty dollars round trip. I took the VPN and put it in New Mexico in Albuquerque, New Mexico. They were four hundred dollars round trip. Same tickets. They didn't care where my credit card was coming from. They didn't care whether whether you were leaving from San Francisco or you were leaving from Phoenix. No, because you could have been flying from Albuquerque to San Francisco for business or something like that. So it's care. cheaper. Yep. Wow. Yeah, because the the people in the Bay Area tend to have a lot more money than people in Albuquerque. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. You know where where is our government? This wonderful government that wants to protect us from TikTok is not protecting us from that double pricing where there's it's cheaper if you're in Arizona to buy a ticket from San Francisco to New York than it is if you live dental. in San Francisco to buy a ticket from San Francisco to New York. Same thing with dental. You know, if you have dental insurance, you know, you, you gotta pay for the dental insurance or something like that, but if you have dental insurance, you get your fillings and, and cleanings and stuff a, a lot less than if you pay cash. Well, I think the well the charge the what the insurance company allows the dentist to charge right. is right. less. Yeah, if you have insurance, and, and then they well, ought to, they ought to charge you the same thing if you're paying. But the that. only the only thing is that that insurance no there is no dental insurance that gives you more than about twenty five hundred dollars a year, and for the most part it's fifteen hundred dollars a year. But you're right, right. they well, do I'll, have to, they have to give you a lower price. Yeah, what? Alex, we've, we've talked about this before, that it, we could run for president, and if we just said, I guarantee you, you know, dental, Obama dental care or whatever, you know, that, that person would win. If they got up, if their platform was, I'm going to provide dental insurance to everyone, they will, I think they will win. Well, I, you know? I, I've, I've argued that for the longest time. I mean, you know, I mean, what, what all of a sudden is it that you have Medicare for just general health? But when it's uh, something that has to do with your teeth, which, by the way, if your teeth go bad and you don't do anything about it, it could kill you. Okay. So my Medicare yep. Advantage plan for oh, twenty one dollars oh, oh. a I gotta a tell month, you, the Advantage plan is a piece of crap. I don't know. Mine works pretty good. Oh really? How much? How for, much? How much dental insurance do you get? I get. I get no deductible and no cap per year with Delta Dental USA through Medicare Advantage plan. I don't believe that. It, it's that's true. I've had it. I actually had the. There Delta is no plan. dental plan, including Delta, and I've had Delta Dental. Okay. Well, you're, if if you belong to the Kaiser, this is Kaiser Advantage plan. Kaiser's a big HMO, and they negotiated with Delta Dental. 
and it costs me $21 a month. Delta for, Dental is not going to, there's going to be a cap. That's how these dental. I'll, I'll, I'll send you, I'll send you off, off, offline and uh, I'll send, I'll send you the. Uh, yeah, but I mean, the, the whole there, thing. There about, is no cap. There is no deductible. Um, cleanings, checkups, x-rays, all free. Well, that, um, that, yeah, that fill, is free. Yeah. Fillings, yeah, fillings and uh, root canals and, and mm -hmm. crowns are about 50% of what the area, what the dentist charge in the area. Mm -hmm. And so do they do uh, they t do they pay for implants? They do. There isn't an ins medical ins a dental insurance plan that I think takes care of implants. That covers implants. Delta Dental USA under the Kaiser gets what Kaiser's negotiated. I I, I don't know. You, I'm going to have to check that. I, there's something I, I'll, wrong I'll, there. I'll, I'll, I'll find because I know find the, I, these insurance people are not going to give you a whole bunch of insurance for your teeth and not put a cap on it you know well you know in this area there's about 40 dentists on it and 37 of them i would never step foot in their office so why uh, they're dirty they're you know they don't they're just not the the top of the line dentists. Oh, top of line dentists don't need to get the the bottom of the line delta dental insurance through kaiser they can yeah. Yeah. demand the premium stuff by the way guess who's asleep uh-huh so what else is new? He wakes up during Amy's show. I don't know what's going Al, on. Alan, Alan's talking too much. <laughs> Alan's explaining something. Yeah, well, well. I can uh, call Phil and ask him to join us. I know how much you miss him, Brian. Oh, oh, you know what? I want to, I want to ask Phil how his penis, uh, penis shots have been doing. Remember he had that, that seven thousand dollar thingy? I think yeah. he said to me in something. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm not supposed to say anything about it, but since you asked, he wrote me and said it's working or something. Really? Maybe yeah, it was. Working. Maybe it, I hear the commercials on on sports talk all the time, and I keep thinking him. Uh, this is uh, something where you inject your penis with what? It's supposed to clean out the whatever is. Yeah, but, yeah, but, that, that, that didn't work for him. He found another thing that, 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 that I guess is working. I don't want to get into detail. If you want to know, ask him. I don't want to know details. I'm just curious. I, I keep hearing the commercial on KMBR, and I thought about it. And I yeah, this is, this is what, what he's getting and what's working somewhat for him is something different that he's actually getting from his urologist. Like Kaiser, a hooker? At Kaiser. Well, probably. Well, I, uh, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I, w I wouldn't take a chance on that, would you? Uh, yeah, I, My, I, know, I know other people. The thing he's using now, that wouldn't have cost him $7,000, the thing he's using now is, uh, you know, approved by the American Medical Association. It's a mixture of chemicals called um, Trimix. And they compound the product, and you inject it in. And it keeps, <sighs> you keep and well, you keep, and it keeps you hard. You know, Google Trimix. You know something? For, oh well. For erection, it works. Oh, I don't think my, do doc, I, I my don't, doctor I, I, always I, said. And it's not this seven hundred dollar. We, you know, sending sound waves through your penis. Thing. No, but I don't think. It, I don't think. Thing. For instance, it would work on me. You know. If it works on him and he's lost his prostate totally, it might work on you. I don't care. I'm 84 yeah, well, years does. old for crying out he loud. Does, well, yeah, he's almost as old and he does. So I'm not willing know. to pay seven thousand dollars for something I used to do for free. You're missing. You're missing yeah. this. The seven thousand dollar thing did not work. Okay, so he's what? Now on a new Kaiser approved, AMA American Medical Association approved medication that you still have to inject yourself and it gives you an okay. erection. I, I don't want to even hear that in Jake Jackson. My doctor injection said if part. they had that fixed and baldness, the guy would be a billionaire. Yes, exactly. And he said there's nothing that cures it or the yeah. Eh, hey, your doctor's my doctor's bald too. So. I know what yeah, <laughs> he said he said if I there have, was like, I had a little spot right here so he said no, if I had something that worked, I'd be using it too. So this, yeah, this I've, Trimix, I've, I don't know what the three chemicals are. Okay, well, let's, let's stop with that because we, it always ends up with you using the word injection. 
uh, and and uh, and yeah, well, it would be hard. I mean, for, you you just no mentioning that you have it to would put be hard for you, me to do it. You mentioned that you have to inject your penis with some kind of compound. All right. Well, my answer to that is, if I had to inject my penis with anything, I wouldn't be able to get it up at all. You know. Actually, with this stuff. Oh no! Have, let's just stop. <laughs> You don't have a you ask. Stop. Okay. Let's talk about Trump again. Brian brought it up. It's his fault. Because I just thought I keep hearing. Well, here I want to ask. I want to ask uh, uh, our our science guy here, Charlie, a question. Uh, today, finally, um, or yesterday, was it yesterday that the rocket went up, or today it went up? Uh, yeah, it went up today. Went up today. Uh, that they He's sent up. He's got a life. He's not sitting around watching for the rocket to go up. It went up today. I love watching these rockets go up. So I just I. love the power with them and, and the fact that we, you know. We could put Donald Trump's house on one uh, with him in it. Can I talk? It works. Can I talk here? Uh, the thing is that it, 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 I look at that and I look at it happening and I'm going, God, all the time we wasted not doing that, you know? But what happened was it went up, and coming back, it, it uh, burned up in the atmosphere, okay? So now uh, the FAA, I think, wants to do an investigation on why. Well, it, I'm sure they'll find out why, because that's what they need to have the answer to to make this thing work perfectly. And with most of these rockets, whenever they've done them two or, you know, the first four or five times, like when they were doing the rockets that came back, you know, the second stage that came back and landed, those were all blowing up and crashing and doing it. Every, well, once they got it, they haven't had a single one crash. So, yeah. you know, you can bet that the next giant mega rocket they send up probably will be able to bring it back here. You know? The FAA. They're that's making terrible. satellites out of wood now. Yeah. They're well, making what? That, satellites what? out of wood? Yes. That is correct. Why? Yeah, why? So um, they, because in space, there's nothing to rock the wood. So they find it's a better component. And when it comes down in, it always burns up. Yeah, but if you had something made of metal, it wouldn't rot either. Nothing would right. rot in Where space. Would, when the, Charlie, when the, metal comes, really nice. when the metal comes back in, it goes into the atmosphere. Bree, move your camera away from all the kids. No, no, they're not kids. They're 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 Asian girls. No, they're kids. The Asian kid. You missed them, Charlie. You can go back and watch it later. There so they are. you said Those the FAA kids. is involved. The FAA doesn't do stuff outside our atmosphere. NASA what I'm might sure do. No, they said the, the uh, FAA. The in, they said the FAA was investigating. In okay, news to me. Well, you're not right all the time. In fact, you're no. not right very often. <laughs> no. I'm right most of the time. No, but uh, they, they were they said the FAA is going to going to check into it. But uh, would would that would that just be what happens anyway, Charlie? As a, a matter of course. Yeah. Because there was nobody in the thing, so it wasn't like anybody got killed, and the thing burned up on coming into the atmosphere, which means it it. It, it fell into the Indian Ocean. Yeah, but they don't want it to fall on c civilians, right? Or well, people. I mean, I think one of the reasons they were doing that was in case they had a problem. Once they get mm -hmm. the salt, exactly. mm -hmm. once they get the only reason when these things blow up, everybody goes, "Oh, it was a big failure." No, oh, and Charlie, will back me up on this. Yeah. When you're learning how to do something, there's no such thing as failure. There's no. only learning. And, and then you go science. back and you look why it yeah. failed, and then you find another reason why the next time it fails, and eventually you've got a fail-proof rocket. And this That's thing, science this works, thing is yeah. gigantic. I mean, how many, how many? Do you know how many people this can hold? Is it like a uh, hundred people or something like that? If they had to put them in there, yeah, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah. And the fact what are they using it for? Well, they're gonna. This is the one that's gonna land on the moon. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought it was going to Mars. Well, no, that's next. Later. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got to go to the moon first. Yeah, we got to go to the moon first because everything we need to learn, we'll learn 
going Hopefully to the moon. Won't fall over the other happens. thing they're putting up, and most people don't know about this, and it will be circling the moon in a couple of years, is going to be a way station, much like a like the you know the uh, uh, what do you call it the uh, space station we have up there above yeah. Earth, but a, circling the moon because what they're going to do is that we're going to send our people to the spa this, this space station, and there they'll get on the capsule that goes down to the moon's surface. Am I right about that, Charlie? Tell me if I'm wrong. That sounds familiar, yeah. That sounds right. Yeah, so it, it, it's good. It's wonderful. It's just wonderful, and I, I, I don't know if I'll live to see it, but some of you may, and uh, <laughs> uh, I think it's thrilling. I, I, I just, uh, it, listen, it was That's always... what I, uh, what I always thought, uh, Alex, yeah. I wanted to uh, live long enough to see a uh, a base on the moon. Yeah, yeah. A base on the moon. Or at least an Arby's, you know? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I said Arby's. It looks like what you're eating is much better than Arby's. Oh, yeah, yeah that looked really good, Bree. Yeah. Noodle soup. Yeah, this is uh, mala soup. It's called mala soup. Yeah. Well, best food I had when we were in China was um, we went to a soup place uh, that had noodles and uh, some kind of base. Oh, it was wonderful. Yeah. Black bean, I think, was it? Mm. It was. Yeah. It was unbelievable. You know where we're going to go eat this weekend? I haven't been there in <clears throat> years. Down in the village, there is a Ukrainian national home or uh, uh, old folks' home. Mm. And in the thing where the Nash, the Ukrainian home is is a restaurant called the Ukrainian restaurant and I always used to go down there and I used to buy pierogi by the by the dozen and just chow them down that's so Polish. I, huh yeah that's not Ukrainian that's Polish. yeah uh, pierogies uh, are Polish if, they're also big in Pittsburgh well, right uh, Pittsburgh you, you're, you're, I, I don't care if you say it's awesome. Polish this is in the Ukrainian restaurant. Okay, so it could be it could be the pierogi is also Ukrainian as well, because all those countries are Slavic countries. Yep. So it's not impossible sure. to think. Break might be a Russian thing too. <laughs> it could be a Russian thing too. I would imagine you can get. It, they also serve borscht. Okay, mm -hmm. now that's Russian, right? Yes. The only trouble was uh, I, I I like borscht when it's strained, not doesn't have the beets in it. Mm. You know. But. Do you uh, <laughs> do you have to go through a metal detector to get into the Ukrainian restaurant? No, I don't. No, no. But I feel good about going there because I'm helping the Ukrainians. <laughs> so, Probably owned by a Mexican family. Yeah. No, no, it's not. It's been there. It's been there. Since I was in New York the first time, like 40 wow. years ago. So Jesus. it's been there a long time. Yeah, really. I was wow. surprised to see that it was still there. You know. Because so many things have gone out of business. I just found out because we were going to be in the area. And I went, oh, you know what I can do? I can go over to the Gem Spa. There was like this place called the Gem Spa. And you know what was invented at the Gem Spa? The chocolate oh. egg cream. Mm. All right. Uh, have you ever no had chocolate? No injection needed. Have you ever had a chocolate egg cream, Brian? I've seen it on TV, but I haven't eaten. Not yet. Yeah. What it is is it's a it's a, a little bit of milk, a mm -hmm. little bit of syrup, chocolate syrup. Fox's you bet is the syrup of choice in making it, and then seltzer, mm -hmm. and it's it's wonderful. It's just wonderful, and it was invented at the Gem Spa. Now, do you know why they call it an egg cream? Hmm. This is stuff nobody wants to know, and I don't know why I'm making a big deal out of it here, but the reason they call it an egg cream is that uh, the first person who made it was over in Brooklyn, and uh, he called it an ah creme with cream. Mm. Okay, it gave it kind of a French name. And then when they started making it, and perfecting it at the gem spa, they called it an egg cream, because but kids. The place, what? 
The place is closed now? Yeah, it closed. I, 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 it, what bothered me is it closed during COVID because they weren't getting any business. Mm -hmm. And so they just closed that the whole place down. Yeah, but I mean, this is after, God, I mean, it was, Jim Spa was there when I came to New York the first time. And that was mm -hmm. in the 1970s. You know, so it's kind of sad to see the passing of something like that. Hello, Kevin. How you doing? Made it. <clears throat> Made it? Yeah, there was a big accident on the road there. Oh, really? That, that commute is terrible anyways. People will say, oh, move down to Morgan Hill. Houses are cheap. So, yeah, you know how long it takes to get to San Jose from there? There's only two or three this lane road on, each way. It's terrible. This was on Highway 25. There was only two lanes, and it's like nobody there right past oh. the roundabout, and they uh. crashed into each other. I mean, what the hell? Nobody, no traffic, nothing. Wow. Yeah, they're so both going the same way, and they both found a way to plow into each other right in front of the dispensary. <laughs> There's a semi going down one of the side streets in Lodi. I went down to a new building we just purchased down the street, and they they had the front end of the whole the, the front cab up in the air. There's no front axle. The front axle was off to the side where they got the truck from because he hit a tree. And oh. there was a flatbed pulling up the whole axle because it's so huge. Uh -huh. And then they had the front lifted, and they were going to just take the front thing. I thought the guy got ejected because the window windshield was shattered. But uh, he yeah. was in there. They, they said maybe he was smoking something or something. But he hit a tree out of nowhere. Just, just, the tree like jumped in front of him out of nowhere? <laughs> exactly. Boy, have I heard that story before. I'm driving down the road, and this car just moved right in front of me. I never even saw it. Yeah, Matt, so have I. And I used to drive an orange truck. Mm. Never seen you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they've had, let me turn had, the lights on for you in broad daylight. There's been uh, been some of uh, the Tesla Cybertrucks around. And, man, do those things stick out like a sore thumb. I don't know how people are driving those things. They're so big. My boss rented one for a couple of days and brought it to work. And it's like fills up the parking spot. And I don't know how people drive those things on the freeway. So well, but it is a truck, though, isn't it? That's the reason it's big. Yeah, but it's not like a regular pickup truck. It's like a Hummer. You know, it's like the extra big yeah. size. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, it's big, bulky block. Lots yeah, so you, know, yeah. you notice them when you see them around. Well, you know, the Bay Area. Do you see a lot of them right now? I mean, people, people bought yeah, them. They're starting yeah. to show up. Yeah, yeah I was down in Monterey. And, all over. I was down in Monterey, and they were unloading four or five of them off a truck down there. Yeah, yeah. I, I see them around Fremont all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just a few of them. But well, what, steel. what is the word on them? Are they good, or are they just uh, unusual? They've got two words on them. There's there's one with two motors in it and there's one with a single motor in it, mm -hmm. and they say that the one with two motors goes a lot better and a lot longer. Mm -hmm. The one with the one motor is not so good. That's what I've heard from Motor Trend. Somebody crashed one in the Beverly Hills Hotel sign last oh, weekend. <laughs> I think it's like, it looks like an armored truck. Yeah. It's like an armored car. How expensive are they? Uh, I think they're sixty-five to ninety-five, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're not that bad, but what do you mean not that bad? I used to when I bought a car, my first car, well, the first new car I bought, my first was, car I, I bought, bought was almost seven hundred dollars. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no, um, I bought a brand new Mustang in the second year they were out. I'm trying to remember what year that was. I've 64 and a half was the first it. year, so either 65 or 66. It had to be 65 because it was one, right as soon as I got out of the Navy, I bought a uh, um, a Mustang. After you defended the country? Yeah. How much Yeah. How much do you think that that, uh, that the Mustang cost me? $5,000. $1,900. Huh? $2,400? You got it. You, you hit it right yeah. on the button. 2400 yeah. bucks. Yeah, yeah 2400 And what was great about them, what was so special, they had a rug in the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And a lighter. Oh. And an AM radio. An AM radio, right? Yeah. Oh, I forgot was that about optional? that. I forgot about that. Yeah. And yeah I did kept, you have I, the pony interior with the horse on the on the seat? 
No, I don't. Yeah. Remember. Did I have a horse? I can't remember if I had a horse on the seat or not. Yeah, the pony interior. Yeah. That might have been. You would have paid if you would have paid like another fifty dollars worth of options. You probably could have sold the car for a couple hundred thousand now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> really? Well, they, it, yeah. it, what, what, how well did they last? I mean, did, were they good still for still around? They're still around. Never oh, yeah, yeah. The high school, high school. I had about six or seven of them. I had a convertible. Black on black on black, beautiful one. And then I had another, I had a bunch of coupes. So the 65, 66, 67, 68, so I had a bunch of coupes because you could take everything apart with the screwdriver and very, very easy to work on, very inexpensive you were, when you're a kid. You were an entrepreneur while you were in school. You rented, a, you, you let your uh, ladies drive around in Mustangs. I see how that works. No way. I cruise San Mateo, El Camino every night, Friday, Saturday night. Well, I, I got, I, I, I bought two other. Uh, two other Mustangs after that. I bought mm -hmm. one, I bought a convertible, mm -hmm. which was fine, but then I moved to Houston, Texas, and it's so hot down there that I didn't want to have a convertible, you know? So I got a, a, a regular you know, hard top mm -hmm. and uh, with an air conditioner in it. They installed an air conditioner under the dash uh, because you couldn't, you couldn't just couldn't have a car in Houston without. Am I right, Charlie? You know what I'm talking about. You can't have a. <laughs> well, does your car have air conditioning? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't. Yeah, but it's a little more modern too. His car. I'll tell you. I think the looks on the Mustang, the original Mustangs, hold up. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's you what know. Brian just said. A couple hundred thousand dollars worth. Yeah, but, but I, mean, yeah. I mean, they're they're what do you call it? They're really uh, uh, they really have held up in in style and so on. They were they were an evergreen. It was yeah, a very historical car. Is when they finally changed the Mustang and made it more of a sedan and whatever that it just you know got crappy. It's like remember what they did? Remember the original Thunderbirds? What a car that was. Mm -hmm. what, what, yeah, 56, just a, 57. Yeah. But then they went to the four door or something like that. Uh, uh, and it just didn't work. The blocky looking one. Yeah, yeah, the blocky looking one. And that was it. That was the end of the uh, the Thunderbird. But man, those original Thunderbirds, everybody wanted one of those when I was a kid. You know. But not everybody had a rich father. A couple of kids yeah. in school had one. You know. But. Uh, it was pretty sad. So anyway, um, um, it's about nothing much else in the news today, you know. Um, and uh, 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 and how, uh, just quickly, uh, let me just ask uh, Josh, how, what would you say our state of the country is today? Yeah, I want, this is your this is your state of the union address. <laughs> is it, state of the country is pretty good. We're Trucking along, working on issues we have. God, you're hopeful. I like that. It's good to be that hopeful. Anyway, let me start playing the theme here, if I can get over here and get it. I tell everybody that I'm playing the theme because they can't hear it because there's something about Zoom where it doesn't put the music through, and I don't understand it. Josh, always great having you here. You really give us some good lessons in democracy. Um, Brian, we haven't seen Adrian tonight. She hasn't even bothered you once. Yeah, she has competition actually tomorrow. She has a minimum day tomorrow at 12, and then we've got to get her hair and makeup done for a competition all night. So. Oh, really? She's, she's going to bed early tonight, so uh, she's uh, trying to have her calm down right now. Cool kid, cool kid. Uh, yes, uh, Alan, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Go get your penis injected right after the show. Not me, baby. Uh, and and look at Bree. He's slurping soup. Thank you for joining us all the way from Malaysia. And, uh, of course, Charlie Wallace. Always a pleasure to have you here. I know you are you look exhausted. Have you been working too yeah, much? Yeah, I was on fire tonight. Worn out. Yeah. Oh, boy. And uh, finally, of course, Kevin. Good having you here as well. Why doesn't everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, let me just uh, let me just get rid of them here uh, so we can, yeah, continue here. Hey, listen, uh, Amy Emanuel is next. She does a show called The Intersection. 
and she'll be taking your calls for citizen panels at uh, GabNet Live on Skype. Okay? So if you don't have Skype, download it and then use it and type in GabNet Live and it'll take you right to Amy. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay? Good night, everybody. <laughs>